So, uh, you know, a couple things, obviously, uh, signing Brandon Crawford. Uh, I know you guys were asking a little bit about how we were thinking about what would happen if, if Mason win or if Tommy Edmund wasn't ready. So it was something that we had been thinking about just to make sure we had some, some depth there. But also, you know, bringing in someone with his resume and what he's been able to accomplish, we think it'll be just a great resource for Mason as he continues to develop. Um, let's, you know, be very clear though, this is Mason's job. Um, we brought in Brennan to just give us that protection should something happen and uh, he understands that role and so we obviously uh, we're excited and we're welcoming him and I uh, think he'll be a nice addition to our team and then uh, there was a corresponding move with Buddy Kennedy who we ended up DFAing and so we'll know in a few days that status of what we end up doing with him but pretty excited about this and uh, glad we were able to get it done. So Brendan had knee and hamstring injuries last year is he fully healthy and, and how much comfort do you have that he still has a lot left in the tank? Well, I think understanding the role is, is probably most important when you think about yeah. this. Um, obviously, uh, he did go through an extensive physical today. We feel pretty good about where he is physically. And, you know, I would I would not expect to see him in a game in the next mm -hmm. you know, week to 10 days. We're going to have to uh, you know, get him back to where he feels confident to, to participate in the game. But really what we're soft circling is, is really trying to be ready by mid to, to late March for us and, and again be that insurance for us. Is part of the conversation with Brandon him playing positions other than shortstop at this point? Not really. I think we have a lot of flexibility there but we don't have a lot of guys that really are that comfortable playing short with the exception of uh, uh, Mason and Tommy. Well when uh, you look at the influx of the infield market over the last week or so did that expedite your decision or was this something that you would hope to to target at this point? Uh, it was something that we were thinking about for a while um, in terms of really engaging in it. As the market started to move, that's when we realized we probably can't wait much longer. What do you think of uh, all the left-handed bats on your bench and how that sorts out? Yeah, a lot of them. But, yeah. um, you know, I think like one of the things that we're most focused on right now is just trying to think about how we look from a defensive standpoint, especially uh, you know to start the game. I feel like that was one of our weaknesses last year when we, when we took a step back. And then when you think about like where we might try to be in, in, in terms of late inning move, yeah. um, obviously that's where Brandon could fit in and give us some protection. Can you elaborate to um, just your, I mean, did you speak personally with Mason about this? Uh, Ollie did. Ollie did. Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned it's his job. I mean, it's not too often we come down here and a rookie has a job. He does usually create a competition. This is the opportunity. Not the opposite, but, the no, but like I think like, show confidence. Yeah, we just want him to know that this move was not made because we don't have confidence in him. How, how much did um, Tommy's rehab play into this at all in terms of just the feeling that need to add depth? Or was that separate? I mean, really, one of the things that we're trying to do is like not move Tommy all around. Uh, you know, get him to one position, and, and so having the ability to bring in someone like Brennan can allow him to just focus on center field. Um, in terms of how that relates to his, his rehab, we still have to be patient, but you know we're still hopeful that he'll be ready. He's he always been a, a, a four-time Gold Glove guy, three-time All-Star. How much can he help Mason as far as you know, giving him tips and you know, being in his corner and be a, be a mentor for him? Well, I think like anybody that has that type of resume can obviously help a young person understand process and, and how to think about preparation. So, you know, that's certainly something we, we hope will happen and uh, you know I think Brandon understands that you know he will try to invest in our young players. You Most the term, you know, defensively took a little bit of a step back. Do you feel like some of the moving around played a factor in that with multiple guys in different spots? And I, I mean obviously you guys look like potentially more stability this year. That's what I'm hoping for and I do feel like some of that movement may have created a, a little bit of a weakness in terms of our defense. So trying to get guys in more of one position is definitely the mindset. Because Tommy's been a guy always with the willingness to, to do that, whatever the team needs from him. But what do you think him sort of taking in and having ownership of that center field role can do for your pitching staff in terms of just the, the confidence of, of his range out there and being able to, to be a, a resource? Well, I think like our pitchers would prefer the best defense possible, right? And in terms of, of Tommy, I think he's excited about just knowing that he, he can work at one single position. Um, that's not to say like something might not happen down the road, but as we as we focus on spring training and preparation for 2024, that's what his focus will be. Do you all have a
feel for what maybe some of the injuries Brandon dealt with last year had an effect on how he performed in the field last year? Well, his reputation is one of those guys that he wants to play. Um, and, and I imagine some of those injuries affected his play, uh, but obviously in a different role, right? Um, he was trying to be their everyday shortstop, whereas here it's, it's a different role for the Cardinals and, and the way we use him and, and, and how we can hopefully protect him physically to get the most out of him for 162. Well, you were obviously quite familiar with Crawford in the beginning of his career when you think about peak times for both the Giants and Cardinals 2012, 2014. What struck you about Crawford then and how have you kind of stayed up to date with his career some of those times? I've always been a fan of him because he just always played the game right, played the game hard. Um, obviously, he was a member of some really successful teams and some teams that beat us. But I just think he was just one of those guys that just went about his business and, and knew how to be successful. And I mean, that's that's great to admire that, right? But you know, now he's part of this this organization, part of this team, and our expectations are that he can help us continue to win. Do you think uh, who was born on the West Coast, played on the West Coast? It sounded like he had multiple options. The fact that he picked your team up. How good is that? You've talked about having guys who want to be in St. Louis. Yeah, I think that's 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 a compliment, and I also think it's partly because of the team we've built. Um, you know, I think he understands we are trying to win, and he wants to be part of something that will. Well, what, how do you involve some of the veteran players in a move like this? Um, you know, obviously we were just sort of we, we talked to them and asked them their opinions, and, and uh, but ultimately it came down to you know the normal proxy of these decisions, right, 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 right. years and dollars, and yeah. so. You know, trying to get that to fit was, was important, and we were able to, to work through that over the weekend, and here we are. The reason why I ask that is you've brought up, and some of the guys have brought up you know, Paul and Nolan and Bob and Matt Carpenter, and obviously Paul and Nolan played with Brandon Crawford. Yeah, this was a little different because, like, like, like you know, when you think back to, to, to Carp's situation, right, he was a release player and available and could have done anything. In this particular case, this was more of a focus on you know, really position position specific, okay. and and as you and I talked about a week ago, like yeah. what would happen in that scenario, and as you may remember, my answer was not clear, concise, or definitive. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And so <laughs> here we are, and now we can be much more definitive. I just, I, so it, it stands out, though maybe it doesn't apply in this, but the, you know, you've added some guys with postseason postseason familiarity to whether it was against you. I, I, yeah, I think his resume speaks for itself, but that wasn't like solely what we were okay, chasing, so it didn't right? Put anything on the scale. No, it did. Okay. It does for sure. Like that wouldn't be fair to someone that has that kind of success to ignore their experience, right? But it, it, it was really more of like someone that can play choice and understand this. And then when you're looking at all the different individuals that were out there. All of them might have different expectations of what their role might be, how much playing time they might get, what their demands might be, um, in terms of like how, how much they're going to play in a week, versus like you know, Brandon understood what we're trying to do, and he, and he fit in with that. But so you couple that with his experience, I mean that's great. Well, well, there are critics out there who point to the age of the roster, but is this another sign that you're all in on trying to win now? Like there's no three-year plan. You're trying to get this thing back on track for this season. Well, we've always tried to win now. Mm -hmm. I, I do think like we're trying to balance some of our younger players. Who's, um, I mean, I imagine if you take the average age of, of our team, it's probably not that old. Mm -hmm. But you know, certainly we've added players with experience, and, and that is part of the equation that we're hoping will get us back to success. Mo, is, is we sort of start counting to 13. Alec Burleson spent the entire season on your active roster last year. Sounding like this, there were only so many chairs. So I, I, I feel like that kind of question uh, in February is like is almost nonsensical. Like so many things can happen, and trying to predict what that looks like a month from now, I don't think it's like it's not healthy. I mean, I understand the math; um, everybody does, but things happen. And the most important thing we're trying to do is just build enough depth so if something does happen, we're prepared to deal with it. In regards to Mason and the starting shortstop job, how would you just go about evalu evaluating um, what you guys have seen in camp from him and uh, as games have started? Well, I think he's like, he's an uber talent, right? I think from a defensive standpoint, we're very confident that he can do the position. It's going to be like, what type of offensive production does he have? But we don't want to have so much pressure on him that it gets in the way of him having success. 
now he has a, a little bit of a lifeline. He has someone that can help him grow, and uh, I think he'll benefit from that. You okay. mentioned you talk about. It. You mentioned uh, Crawford being the guy who really likes to play. He can say that he embraces the reserve role. Is it easier said than done to kind of transition into that kind of role? I don't know. I've been doing this a long time. Like most people that say they're willing to accept a role do. Um, you know, you know, so I'm not really worried about that. In terms of transition, I think people know where their bodies are at. These guys are athletes and they, they're in tune with it. You uh, earlier were talking about Tommy Hunter focusing on the setting. How much of that product that you might have? That really wasn't like a variable in that, but you know, it does make sense to understand that it is four weeks away. Yeah. So you know, the clock's ticking. Do you do you need to see a minimum mile? Or do you have an idea of how much you would play before you go okay? I don't. You know, um, you know can we can be as patient as we can. Yeah. But at some point, there might be a decision that has to be made. But that goes back to the whole depth part. So right. you know, we cross that bridge when we have to. I, I think I think the I think most important thing for him is just where he gets to the point where he's really confident in it. Good. Thank you.